your metabolism is stuck, this video is for you. Now, I'm gonna preface this with, some people may think their metabolism is stuck, but if you're not tracking food, actively working out, you're a pretty active person, it may just be your inputs, not the metabolism actually being stuck. So first off, make sure you've been actually data tracking for a bit and tracking progress. And if that's been stuck for an extended period, two, four, six weeks, this video may be for you. If it's not, jot the food down, track your workout, make sure you know your inputs because beyond that, you're just guessing, right? So this is gonna be for person B who's tracking, they've been actively stuck for a while. If that's you, listen up. So going into this, you have to remember the function of the body. And the function of the body is not to thrive, it's to survive. So from a survival mechanism, your body does not care about being lean, it does not care about being strong, it does not care about looking good. It cares about living. And strength is directly correlated to what we need for our daily stimuluses. So this is the weight train, right? You don't need to be able to pick up two or 300 pounds to live. But when you weight train, you trick the body into it, right? Use more muscle mass, etc. So if you've been at this a while and your weight is sticking, there's a few things that can happen, could have happened to, got you, to get you to this point. And with this, it's gonna mean our body's gonna adapt to us lowering calorie thresholds. So let's say you went you know, 2,000, 1,500, now you're at 1,000 or 1,200, the body goes, huh, how can I make all my motions more efficient to burn the least amount of calories possible? So the same things that you were doing before in terms of cardio, if you've been doing treadmill, elliptical, the, the, the same weight training split, the body's got these mapped out, it's not going to do a massive calorie burn to get these actions taken. It's gonna make those motions the most efficient possible to burn the least calories in the time you do them. So the first thing you can try to do is switch up what you're doing. And this can be as simple as if you've been doing elliptical for cardio, say hop on the bike, hop on the Stairmaster, jog on a treadmill. It has to vary up when it comes to that. If you've been doing the same weight training split, it may be time to vary that weight training split because the body knows the inputs. So that, that's step one. Step two, whenever I'm dieting, I don't like to crank one lever down. So meaning I don't just like to reduce calories. That really gives the body a chance with those adaptations to it. So with this, if I crank down the, the uh, calorie intake, I usually will crank up the output. So this would be either more steps, a little bit more cardio, maybe intense uh, weight training, but they usually work in tangent. So we give it one variable that goes, okay, you want, you want to do more? I'm going to adapt the metabolism to it because your metabolism is adaptive responsive. So we have to give it lead for more calories. At the same time, you restrict more calories and then it will go into a higher state to preserve the muscle mass we have. So that will help along the way. Now, if you've been doing this and it's still, you know, whatever, 1,000, 1,200 calories, that weight sticking, you have to look at your performance. So your average person is going to hold three to 400 grams of glycogen, stored carbohydrates within the muscles. Usually, usually, the first thing we chastise across the process is carbs. We gotta get rid of these carbs, they're evil, no more carbs, etc. We need carbohydrates for strength training functions. So they're not the devil, they are a very essential process, very essential nutrient in this process. Now with this, when we constantly downregulate the intake, what we're gonna get is a, a assortment of problems, and one of which is that metabolism is gonna adapt to it. That is an issue, right? Because now you're burning more. The other thing is it's going to downregulate thyroid production and all that. And that is a very beneficial hormone for burning fat. So you'll see this especially uh, common in ketogenic diets. And this is where uh, targeted ketogenic diets, carb spikes, etc. work out really well for those things. Now with this, you can deplete the glycogen, essentially just run on fumes. So it's kind of the equivalent of you putting a quarter tank of gas in your car and trying to drive across country. It's not going to happen. You don't have enough fuel. So then your body can start breaking down muscle tissue and all of a sudden you're lowering your overall lean tissue, which is gonna lower your overall metabolism. So even though you're doing more, you're burning less sitting on your butt and that's where it creates a problem. So again, if you've been stuck two, four, six weeks or longer, it may be time to implement a load. And this is where people panic a little bit. And this is something we can use to kind of uh, boost that metabolism, so to speak, along the way. And so when that thyroid gets downregulated, the problem is your, your metabolism is burning low. The body is going into starvation mode. It's in a prolonged state of dieting. It's going, how can I survive this? There's not enough food. Let me adapt my metabolism. So the frequency of spikes will depend on the person, but they will also get that metabolism boost because when the body's getting these influx of calories, it's not going, who the winter's here. I need to, I need to get rid of all this muscle. I need to get rid of this. It's going, okay, 
I'll give a few more calories. I, I can shed some of this stored weight. And so what you want to do with this, if you're someone holding three to 400 grams of glycine, average amount, that's going to take 1,200 to 1,600 extra calories above what you're, what you're burning. So if you're kicking in 1,200, not losing weight, your body has adapted to that. Meaning you would have to intake 2,400 to 2,800 calories in a day to potentially replenish the glycogen storage. And so your common symptoms of depletion when this may be needed, for me, I'll get like a little tension headache, almost like center, center headache. I will be super snappy and super irritable. So if you're noticing those things, cool. Your gym will usually fade. And now most people don't train with enough intensity to actually see this, right? They're training really high reps, not max effort, more like 60, 70% intensity versus like 80 to 90, which are in the shine. But what it'll look like if you're training hard, that glycolic threshold is eight to 12 in the S, right? So that initial ATP, CP, creatine, phosphate phase, that's five, maybe eight reps. And so if you're getting out of that threshold going into glycolic and there's not enough carbs in the tank, it's gonna be like you unplugged a vacuum when you were vacuuming, right? So it'll literally be like one, two, three, four, five, done. And it's gonna do that on quite a few exercises. You'll notice your overall energy is lower. Usually the appetite will start getting a little bit more ravenous, but then some people they go backwards, right? Like they don't, they're just not hungry, they're not energetic you will lose some pep in your step. The sleep function usually gets off. So if you're getting kind of sporadic, patchy, insomnia type feelings, that's another thing. Hormones are starting to go a little bit wonky. All of these things are symptoms of depletion. Now, not one symptom will mean, hey, it's time to eat, let's, let's get to it. But if you notice a weight stitch and you got two or three of those symptoms, it may be time to do one of these spikes and loads. And so just know it if you're a little bit worried about it, one pound of fat is 3,500 calories. So even if, you overeat that 1,600-ish calories, the most you could store in terms of body fat would be a half a pound. So it, it's not gonna do anything. Now, will the scale go up? Absolutely. So here's how that works. Let's, let's say you were weighing 150, right, for our point of reference. If this refeed was really needed, your weight will actually go down the next day, okay? And that's not good. It means you were, you were pushing that throttle a little too long. Now, if the weight's the same the next day, that's really good. It means you, like, you got it in, and that metabolism's cooking, and, and now you're replenished, you're full. If the scale goes up, 100% normal. That's typically what we wanna see. One to two pounds is usually a pretty good bounce for them. If it goes up three, four, it a, either wasn't needed, or you may have had uh, foods in there that you have a digestive allergy to, or an intolerance to, that spike the body with inflammation, right? So those are a few things that can happen. Now, what it's gonna look like is your weight has been sticking here, it's gonna spike up after this meal, and then what it's gonna do, it's gonna trend down. And then eventually depletion is gonna happen again. And the more muscular you are, the leaner you are, the more frequent it's gonna happen. So someone like myself, when I would do contest prep, I'd be three times a week closer to a show. Further out, I would be two. And this would be like an entire large pizza, burger, fries, and a blizzard a few times a week. So it's, it's kind of ass backwards from what people think in terms of that. It, it's not like you have to eat it from sweet potatoes or rice. It, you just have to get enough fuel in your tank to replenish with stored carbohydrates, get that thyroid function back up to par, all, all the above, right? And so after you do those refeeds, you're typically gonna notice increased strength, the body temperature will feel higher, increased sweat, you're gonna sleep better, the mood's better. If you get all those and the scale did what I just talked about, you're in a really, really good spot. And so then it's about riding it out until it happens again. So if you notice that flat line in the training, a little bit edgy, cool, right? It's, it's getting close. It's probably about that time. And then you would throw another one. And so again, if you're higher body fat, they're going to be less frequent. If you're lower body fat, they're going to usually be more frequent, especially if you have more, more lean tissue. Now you want to go with this from a logical, not an emotional decision, because obviously dieting is a little, a little bit of a mental task. So if you go into it and <laughs> you're like, oh yeah, yeah, that weight was heavy today. I'm going to eat you're probably never going to lose weight. So you need to make sure it's the right time. So look at the data, look at the emotional components of it, right? How you're feeling, energy, snappiness, et cetera. And if all of those are combining more than not, it's probably time to do it, right? And guys, if you have any questions on this, you think it's something that, that you need help with or you're not quite understanding, maybe, maybe you're there, maybe you're not, shoot me a message, I'll kind of walk you through my thought process on it. This is the same stuff I use in internally with clients and things like that. But shoot me a DM if you have any questions on that. I would love to go over this stuff with you.
talk to you soon.